Welcome to Mastering Mathematics. Here's our instructor, Dr. Karen Weston. Oh my gosh, my heart is in my hand. These students, must be choices murdering them, okay? And what is it? The simple little things they did for the grade six and in the primary school, all right? It doesn't get any more difficult than that. But we can't cry over still bit. We just have to work with them. So we're going to sit them down and again, we implore the young parents to make certain that you tell your students, help the teachers. They have to remain focused. You can't be saying you're sitting down to do maths for 15 minutes and in that 15 minutes you have to say, hey, what is Janice calling me? Oh, uh, let me just take this phone call. Ah, uh, so-and-so calling me. Oh, yes, look at this. Hey, I just remember. That does not work. You have got to be single-minded. All right? Single-minded. The people who do well, it's not saying that you have to do a book work because I'm sure you're hearing even those top students, 17 and 21 subject, how much time they had for other things. But that is how you start getting organized now. If you're going to be an academia, you must know this work is harder than if you're putting bush or are using a cutlass. You understand? I'm using my cutlass and I am so relaxed. After two or three hours you're sitting and doing academic work, you're so tired. All right? But don't take it for granted. And parents, they have to start cultivating these habits from now. That is seriously missing. And we need to get back there to make certain the students understand they're not doing anything for you, they're doing it for themselves, okay? And they must make certain that they are focused and concentrated. Last night, or the day before, what did we do? We were actually asking which statement is true, and we gave you these, and it was two thirds, and we know that that's. This sign means greater than, so is two thirds greater than three quarters, or four fifths less than five sevenths, or six sevenths greater than five sixths, or three quarters less than four sevenths. And we say, how do you know what to call them? And remember what we say? The names are what from the denominators. So if you had an 8 for the uh, denominator and the numerator to use it, two eights, okay? So that is how we know how to call the fractions. And we emphasize again that this sign, that this sign means greater than, and this is our less than, all right? And I told you last night that we cannot compare two unlike things so we have to make certain, and you know when I talk about unit, what it means, so I'm using that term. We have to make certain the unit, but in terms of fractions, we say the denominators are the same. And you would say, Tom, Ms. Weston, how do you get that? And it's no big magic, because suddenly we know this is going to be multiplied by this numerator, so it's like a crossing of an x. Four times two will give you eight, because we know the denominators, just multiplying three, four, the two denominators multiplied would give us our LCM. Is that true, Jetta? Yes. yes. So you say three times four, you get 12. So you know, for this little set of people, the denominator or their foundation is 12. All right? And then so this number goes with this numerator opposite, and this goes with that. So you say four twos, eight, and three threes, nine. And you get your answer immediately. So you can just eyeball. 4 times 7 give you your 28. 5 times 5 give you your 25. The else, the denominator would be 5 7 okay? 35. And that was what was done. And here you can do 6 6s, 36. The, uh, the denominator 6 7s, 42. Okay, so we have that. Then you're going 6 6s, 36. 7 times 5, 35. And here, 4 7 is 28, so you know the denominator would be 28. And then you're going 7 times 3, 21. 4 times 4, 16. And that is how we got those answers. But, and even my little people, they would even be saying that that is 12, so you're saying 3 to 12 goes 4 times 4 2 is 8. That's what we're talking about. Over here, the sign, so the LCM is still 12. 
12 goes 3 times 3, 3 is 9. So if you see it like that, that is all we say, all right? But we're showing you how quickly you can do it without even stirring up all these, all right? So this now translates to so that we can say 2 thirds is the same thing as 8 over 12, and 3 over 4 is the same thing as 9 over 12. And the question we have to ask, what did we say? The numerator says how many things we are taking. The denominator says what was the total that we started from, okay? And if I'm saying in the numerator, we're giving them away. Uh, you have 8 over 12. And is 8 over 12 greater than 9 over 12, Jetta? No. No. If you, if you, somebody give you 8 mangoes and I get 9, who are the most? Right? Who are the most? Right. Well, so that know. is wrong. Okay, take it off. What about now, if somebody again gave us, and this time, let me see what I want this time. Oh, I want some roti. So if they gave me 20, they had 35 rotis, you know, and they say, hey, I'm sick of these things, I'm giving them away. So if they gave me 28, and they gave you 25 jetto, would 28 over 35 be, great, be less than 25 over 35? No, 28 no, is more. I would get the right. This would be the giant I should be getting the 28. Right, of course, right. No, if no, if no, they gave me. Suppose I jumped down here because I forget I didn't see that one. And I went here and said, watch here. Okay, this time somebody have some, um, what they have this time now? Oh, they have some old pencils that they say, hey, these things are rotten, so I don't want them. And I say, oh, give them to me because I can find some goodness in one of them, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So if they gave me, they had 28 of them. And if they gave me 21 and gave you, Jetta, 16, because I said, come, Jetta, you look like say, you now have one, so let me show them on you. Mm -hmm. And you got 16. Would 28, 21 be less than 16? No, I go have five more. Right. Okay. No, so that is not right. No. So we're leaving this because we could eyeball it. So we wanted to take our case now. If I had 36 cups of ice cream out of 42 and you got 35, all right, because I said, oh gosh, sorry, I wanted both of you to have the same amount. You know, but one shot. Who would have the biggest one, Jetta? This was the one. <laughs> all right, I would have one more. So 36 over 42 is greater than 35 out of 42. Yes. Isn't that true? Yes. So then we know right away that the fraction involved here would be this one, which would be true. All the others are not true, okay? So our answer would have been 6, 7 is greater than 5, 6. And that is the correct answer. And parents, you see, you can play with things with your children, you know. Show them, you know, the things they like to talk about. Some of those guys, they love to talk about cars. So, right, so let's say, suppose that they bought you a set of two cars, then which one will be what or what? And so you don't have to keep it in the mathematical term all the time. And then you switch back, so that we call this learning by association. See what it is they like, all right? And then just use that. That is their tool. That is what we'll be calling the artifact in the classroom in terms of learning the mathematics. So artifact does not mean somebody they all, 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 and ready for the museum, all right? It's whatever tool you're using at that time. But just change up your teaching strategy. Don't be straightforward. Talk to them. Let them use, use the language that they understand, okay? That's why I used to like to go to sober sport because you would say, and Faber Jr. was lawyer because he would say, just talk or talk, man, all right? And that is what you have to do in the classroom. Make certain that you reach the children at their level. And they're going to like you, and you're going to have fun. And then, if you have a little 10 cents or something, all the things are not so cheap these days, you'd have to have a $5 interjector, right? A $5 will not buy woods or any of the things, buy a little sweetie and give them, and whoever come up with the right answer, throw it and then you'd see how fast, okay, these people work. Because just, it's not the whole big day, the thing is, but just to say, they got the incentive. All right, we're going to send you on your break, and we'll be right back to give you some more. To succeed in mathematics, you need to build on what you've learned before. New concepts are added to and build upon previous concepts. It is very important that the early material be mastered thoroughly. 
Similarly, mastery of material from previous classes makes success in later classes more likely. So continually review and practice concepts from previous sessions. Complete all readings and especially homework assignments as soon as possible after they are announced. And definitely complete all assignments before new material is covered. This ensures that the information is fresh in your mind and linked to more basic concepts previously learned. Do your assignments early enough to allow you to get help with the things you do not understand. Join us for a new series of Mastering Mathematics, Mondays and Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. here on ABS-TV. Right, you have to take a break and we are back and we are going to continue because of course the multiple choice, yes, they are flooring me to see that, yes, my students, we don't know too many of these and remember to make your tablets now your best friend. YouTube and you can get everything I am right here teaching, especially my students from Barbuda, because we want to create history this year, okay? Seeing here, she's now learning all those things, and everything is really coming home. But I have to test them more on the multiple choice too. Remember, I'm on the tablet, any topic that we haven't done here, we would have done most of them already. So you don't have an excuse, go to the website, Oh, you don't have to say go to the website, go to YouTube and you just start um, Googling Mastery Mathematics and you can, you get everything right away. Use your tablet wisely. Use it for educational purposes. Now, let us get back here with our, with our basic mathematics, okay? And this is a large classroom now because there's room for all grade 6 or grade 4 and all these students too. Because this is what my students are having trouble with. And here we are, multiple choice. What is 85 divided by 0 0.17? What is 85 divided by 0 0.17? Do you know teachers in the primary school take the time to call them so students with no quotient, they with no dividend, they with no remainder. Isn't that true? All of these words, okay? And no, this is what we have. Now, if I had to translate that, and I wrote it like 85, and it's divided by, and we have 0 0.17. That is what we have to do, students, and especially my grade 6 student. What is the first thing we would have to do in order to make this possible for us to perform? Because he's the lone student here, Jetta has to answer this question. I, I, What's the first thing we have to do, Jetta? I would um, try to make the decimal into a whole number, and I guess I'll have to do the same thing for the Exactly. Year. Does not change, doesn't matter which topic you're doing. We have got to be compatible, all right? So, oh, big word. Uh -uh. We have got to be on the same level, all right? The units, again, that the units must be the same. So we can't be having a member of a family. And this is where, for those of us, the law of closure must come in, okay? The numbers must be from the same family. So you see, we just told what closure means, okay? The law of closure says, every time we do something, the operations must give us back a member of that same family, okay? So you can't start with fraction and get a whole number and say the operation is closed. It's not. The members must be the same. So, right. So we say, very simple to our students, that you're moving your decimal point one, two places because it's in the ten, it's in the hundredth position. Isn't that true? And what we do here to the divisor, we must do to our number here too. Okay? So again, because don't forget there's a decimal point here, all right, at the end of that number, but then it would now be zero, 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 right down to infinity. Okay? So when we move it two places and we go in the same direction, so we also have to go one, two. 
So this number now changes. So we now have our 17 whole number, and this changes now to 8,500. Okay? So we do both. Okay? What we do to one, we have to do to the other, because we have to make them the same. And we know our tables, don't we? Jetto, what are we going to do here? 17 into 85 goes what? Um, 17, 34, 34, and 34 is 68. Uh -uh. 68 and 17 is. I'm behind, I'm behind. 35. It's only the fact that's the long way. Right, I'm not going to do anything any long way. Students, I'm giving you some shortcuts and some looking things. You see, you have a 7 and you have a 5. What number multiplied by a 7 will give you a 5? Five. Five. So you try that. Whether you know your tables or not, you're looking to see what have I multiplied by that when I multiply seven by what number would give me a five as an n number. And that is where you start from. Alright? Because we know right away that this is hundreds, alright? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get something with hundred coming back. But this is our concern right here. This in relation to that. And we're looking to see. Okay? Because six fives, well, no. so you're saying, what, seven, seven, seven times what would give me a five as the you in the unit position? And you said five, and you try it. So here you have your little stuff, and you're going, remember for your multiple choice, no calculators. The calculator is the biggest one here, the brain, all right, the biggest calculator. And then you're going five sevens, 35, and you say, that's there, it's right there, okay? No great magic, and that is what we say, teachers. You start giving them numbers and let them start examining the numbers. What's the relationship? How can I get? Show them these little tricks. So don't make it boring. It's not just sitting down and saying, ah, da, da. No, 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 no. Let them stand up. Get them all over and doing these sort of things, okay? So we can know a five would go right here. And then you see right away you're getting your 85. Okay, and you bring down your zeros, and then so that that would go, and then so, and you're subtracting, yes, you're getting all zeros, so you get your zeros up there, and the answer there is equal just to 500. Okay, oh, I forgot to put the choice up at that time because I wanted you to see right away, and the choices were given, yes, it was A. And so I want you to know that it's not the choices first. No, you're looking to get your answers first, and then you can look at your choices. Five, C, fifty, and D. They would have given you five hundred. Okay. So you have to know that. And again, notice our place value comes in for everything. Okay. So that would be hundred, and then so we know what we're doing. And right away, then we saw that the answer here would have been equal to our 500. And that's it. And again, look at what number, decimal, we have to bring the decimal to whole numbers. All right? So please examine those. Because how much time I see teachers spending in classrooms giving you these things. And then we come out and we ask these questions. And we're still getting them wrong. Now I'm going to jump quickly and change the, the, the meal a bit and give you this one. Because do you know that my students are getting this question wrong? Solve for x. And I'm going to say something too, all right, about something like this. So here we have it. Um, so we're taking you now into some algebra which it says, Solve for x. Let's write it up. Solve for x. And this is what we have. 3x and it is plus 3x plus 2 is equal to x plus 5. That my fifth form is a lot of problem. 3x plus 2 is equal to x plus 5. What do we tell them every time they have to do? Jetto. Uh, you have to closure. 
Houston. Uh, it's close. That's <laughs> using closure. I don't you know how to use closure. Okay. Um, no closure here because we have two things. We have variables and numbers. So what do we have to do? We have to put all the X's on one exactly. side and all the numbers okay. on the other side. Okay, you have to be careful enough when they teach you a little <laughs> new thing. You see how they want to jump and use it? All right, good. So this time, it's not closure that comes into play here. It is, say, all right, we have two teams. So this is the football team, isn't that true? So we have those that are called the X's and those that are the numbers. X's may be the Warriors and the other ones may just be the plain ones, okay? Paramount, the football's on there. Wow, they're very good now. So this is now, all the X's will be coming to one side, but there's an equal side. So when we put in, let's say we want all the X's on this side here, this X has to now cross this equal sign, and what happens to it? The sign will change. We change the sign, okay? So it's a plus over here, it comes over as a negative X. And if you ask why, we want to make it zero over here, so it would be X, and we're saying minus X, plus the five here. So if we put a minus X here, we have to put a minus X over here too. Still plus the two. Uh, no, sorry, we're gonna take over the two this time, and it's equal now to, and so from over here, I was just showing why we had the minus X. But no, we don't want that confusion, so let's tell us what we're doing. We're using the method right now where we say that it is taking all the x's to one side and all the numbers on one side. And if we're crossing the equal sign, we change it to the opposite sign. And if you want to know why we do it, well, I'll show you later. Yes, when I'm saying take off and take on. So that is now 3x minus x would be equal. The 5 stays on this side. The 2 is moving, and it is coming to the opposite side, so then it would be minus 2, okay? And then if you have 3x and x, what does negative x mean, Jetta, in terms of number? Negative 1x. Right. The 1 is understood, so we don't want 1. If an examiner to see a child, and they come up and they're writing a 1 here, you know, that's not a mathematician, isn't it? Right. right. So you're just writing minus x, so that we're here. This would now give us that this is 2x, and it's now equal to 5 minus 2 would give you 3. Isn't that true? We don't want 2x, we want 1x. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of the x, so you're going to get 3.2. Okay? We want to able to go, so x then would be equal to 3.2. Okay, and that is what we are doing. It does not change because it says multiple choice. Now, I want to show you the choices that they gave you. They gave you A, and it's equal to 35. B, and it's equal to 2. And C is equal to 1.5. And D is equal to 1. Cheta, we said the answer was x is equal to 3.2 and we told them that they're doing their work in and then matching. Do they have that number anywhere over here, 3.2? Yes. As the, as the choice? Yes, it is. Where? It's in a decimal form. It's in a decimal form. So students, do not be put off because you have an improper fraction. Please note that you can write this again as 2 into 3 goes 1 and a half. And a half is the same thing as 0.5, so it can be 1.5, okay? So it is right here. So they will say, well, we do the work here, that's Miss Weston say, what am I going to see? Yes, you must also ask yourself, is there not a format in which I can write my answer? All right? So you're going to look for all these things and see. Now, there is something that is vexing about this question for me too, because I saw a student this week and they had something where they had just a simple 4x plus 8 is equal to, let's say it was 20. I don't know how. Or they had, let's not even say 4x, they had something like it was 8 plus x is equal to, let's say, 20. Okay, that was the, let's say we had some like that. What that teacher told the children to do is to say, 
they would have been writing 8 minus x is equal to 20. And I will parents to examine the book of your students and see. And ask the teacher where that minus x came from. Not going to call the names, not going to call any schools. But that is wrong. Alright? You know, because you're coming down to a level, you have 8 plus x, and then the second line is going to be showing you a minus x. And from out of the blue, somehow you're going to see they have 20 minus 8 is equal to x. That's confusing. And later on, we're going to be in trouble. So I'm asking you parents to check your students, check and see if they're doing algebra and they're solving for x and the second line changes after you have seen the first line where it is all positive and then you see your students have it or your, your children have it, a minus for the x equal to some number. That minus is wrong, all right? That method is wrong and it's going to cause confusion later on. So check it please and ask the teacher to change that format because it is wrong. Okay? Again too, we have teachers that are, you like to try things and do different things. When we have this topic set, they tell you instead of using, so this is called, this is not just called a Venn diagram for the sake of calling a Venn diagram. It is universally accepted. A Venn diagram means that it is a rectangle and circles. Now, not because in your books um, you will get authors telling you the circle, you can use anything for the circle. We are doing a standardized examination from CXC, and they are going to be using rectangles and circles. So don't have your students when they're using rectangles and then for your subset, just because they say you can use anything, you're telling them to use rectangle or anything coming in. Universally, it has been accepted that rectangles and circles are the notations we'll be using, especially for an examination body. And we have to start training our students for something like this. Okay? It's good to tell them, yes, it can be written anything else, but what, do not play around with people's children especially when you're preparing them for an exam. Because CX is going to be using the notation, Venn diagram has a meaning, okay? And it is not because um, so-and-so makes certain you're sticking to the notation that students will be using on the exam paper. Yes, I do look over my shoulder, and I do see students and stop them from time to time. They don't have to be public school students or anything. I'm just going to sit down and be an inquisitive and say, so let me see what you're doing in maths and see what is. And that is how I'm finding out a lot of the things, okay? When we teach them these wrong things, it's hard to undo them. And I want to thank that teacher who immediately, as soon as I pointed out that in terms of labeling a graph, all right, you, you always, you're starting one, two, three, and then you, so if you're coming down here, it's not negative three, then negative two. You still have to go negative one, negative two. All right, get those things right, because it's our students who will be suffering later on. And thanks very much to that teacher who quickly, right away, adapted and do that. So we are looking and we are checking and my, I am like a detective going around and just coming up close to you and saying, let me see the maths you're doing and say, so what did your teacher tell you to do, all right? So make certain that they can answer the questions. Um, why are you doing this? This bothers me. You're going from a positive and then down here is a negative and then over here the child changes back to a positive. Why? It does not happen like that. Okay, there's logic and reasoning in terms of the step. So, until next time, keep on practicing because we want that 20% increase in our passes. See you next time. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.